Hi there, this is Terry from stampingmagic.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is a small gift box. It's rectangular and it has a lid. I've created it to hold a gift for my friend, which is some hand cream. And I'm going to show you how I calculated the size of the box I needed and take you through everything step by step. So let's get started. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle because I know that's the shape of the box that I need. And this is the base of my box. And then the rectangle I'm drawing around it, that's representing the sides of the box. Now I have my hand cream here and I just need some basic measurements. The length of the tube is just under five and three quarters. So I'm going to make my length of my box five and three quarter inches. Now the widest part of the tube measures just under two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to make my box two and a quarter inches wide. The thickest part of the tube is the lid. Uh, the diameter of which is just under one and a half inches. So that's what I'm going to make the height of the box, one and a half inches. Now I have all the measurements that I need. I just need to add some of these together to get the size of the cardstock I need to create this box. I need to add my width measurement to my two side measurements. So that gives me five and a quarter inches for the width. And then the length, I need to add five and three quarters to the two side measurements again. And this gives me eight and three quarters. So I know the cardstock size I need is eight and three quarter inches by five and one quarter inch. And I'll need to score this on all sides at one and a half inches, which is the height of my box. Now, I need to go through a similar process again to calculate the card size for the lid. So I can draw my rectangles again. And this time I'm going to make the sides of the lid just one inch. So you'll say, see just a little of that base below the lid. Again, my sizes are exactly the same as regards to the length and the width but I'm just adding a sixteenth of an inch extra so that the lid will go smoothly over the base. I like my lids to be quite a tight fit. If you prefer them to be looser, then allow perhaps about an eighth of an inch instead. Okay, so again, I need to add up my measurements. So this time I've got two sides of an inch each plus five and three quarters plus that sixteenth of an inch which gives me seven and thirteen sixteenths and then for my width I've got two and a quarter the two side measurements and again an extra sixteenth of an inch which gives me four and five sixteenths of an inch and this time I'll score the cardstock at one inch on all sides the scoring is really simple for this box because we've just got one measurement for each piece. Now for the base, you just want to score on all sides at one and a half inches. Then for the lid, you want to score on all sides at one inch. Apart from the size, the two pieces are identical. They each have a scored square on each corner and we want to convert those squares to tabs so we can make our box shape. So for each square, we're going to cut up the vertical score line and then we're going to do a little slant cut on either side of that tab. So 
So when you finish one, just turn your cardstock. We're going to cut up the score line and then do a little slant cut on either side of that tab. And this just helps the box to fold in a little neater. So again, straight cut, then two slanted cuts. The lid is exactly the same. So on each corner you make the straight cut and the two slanted cuts on the side of that tab. Okay, now if you manage to go a little awry and you cut your tab and it's facing a different direction, it really doesn't matter. It makes no difference whatsoever. It will still look exactly the same once it's put together. Before I put this box together, I'm going to decorate the lid. Now I have some paper here from the Botanical Butterfly Celebration Designer Series paper pack. And because this paper has a one-way design, I'm just trying to make sure that I get the orientation right before I stick it down. And then I'm just going to add glue to the back and position it onto the lid. Now, if you want to, you can wait till your box is complete before adding the decoration. But I find it easier to do when the various pieces are flat. The first thing to do is to fold on all the scored lines and then burnish them with a bone folder. Do this for both pieces. To construct each piece, all you have to do is add glue to the tabs and stick them to the adjacent side section. So the glue goes on the outside of the box and then you slip the tab underneath to the side section and position it there. As you do each corner just make sure that the corners remain square and you don't pull the tab over too much, making it slanted. When you've done all four, you can add your gift and then we can do exactly the same for the lid. So just add glue to each corner and then stick it to the adjacent side section. The lid can then be added onto your box. I want to decorate the top of the box so it coordinates with this card. I have some scrap basic black and whisper white card here. and I'm using one of the stitch shaped framelit dies to cut out the white mat. And then I'm going to use one of the layering ovals to cut out the black mat. After I've cut the white mat, I'm going to run it through the Big Shot with the tufted embossing folder. I'm using a normal cutting sandwich for the Big Shot, so that's the main platform, then the thin die adapter, followed by an acrylic plate. Then I'm adding my cardstock with the dies on top. Then I'm going to add the white die cut into the tufted folder 
and here I'm just trying to center the pattern onto the die cut. Now I need to change the sandwich in my big shot, so I'm just using the main platform and then I'll add my folder with the die cut inside because this is a dynamic textured folder and then um, an acrylic plate and I'll send that through. There's no stamping on this box. I'm just using the Botanical Butterfly uh, Designer Series paper and I'm punching out some of the butterflies using the Butterfly Duet punch. And I want one large butterfly and two smaller ones. The two oval mats can now be layered together. I want to add the butterflies onto the box so that they're dimensional, they're not flat in any way. I want the wings to be raised but the body to be flat. So to do this, I'm going to cut little pieces of dimensional and add them to the edges of the wings and then I'm going to add Tombow glue to the body of the butterflies. Now I'm going to start with the larger butterfly and I'm just going to gently bend the wings back and this will give me a flat surface where the body is and I'm just going to add some tiny dots of glue and then position the butterfly centrally on that panel. So I position the body first and then just press the wings down gently and if the body pops back up I just press it back down until the glue takes and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the smaller butterflies I can now add dimensionals onto the back of this panel and remove the backings. The panel can then be added to the top of the box. To finish off, I'm just going to add some basic rhinestones to the bodies of the butterflies. And here we have the finish box, together with the coordinating card. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. 
and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.